The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to the June 14th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to touch at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you have a question but you can't call in, I've got your back. And for that, send me an email. Send it off to Steve at TFNN.com. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic Father's Day Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a slight mix in that bag out there, and that bag being the U.S. indices, the NDX 100 up 16 points, the other U.S. indices trading to the downside. 217 for the Dow, 19 for the S&P, 34 for the Russell, 37 for the semis, 306 for the trannies. We got gold up 27 bucks, uh, silver's up nine cents, light sweet crude is off 29 pennies, natural gas back two cents, and a 30 year treasury up 21 ticks, print out at 12016. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Adobe, up 67 bucks. That's nearly a 15% move. MicroStrategy, 42 bucks, nearly 3%. Broadcom, another good day, 20 bucks, one and a quarter percent. Netflix up 18, nearly 3%. HubSpot, 17, that's a 3% move there. Our shakers to the downside, Restoration Hardware, up 45 bucks, 16%. Asthma Holdings, 32 bucks, 3%. Parker Hannafin, 30 bucks, 6%. United Rentals, 25, 4%. And Supermicro's down 26 bucks. That is a 3% move to the downside. So we've got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. And let's just start here like we have the past couple of days. Let's take up. Now, the amazing thing is we've actually just attained oversold reading status. We take a look at this New York Stock Exchange. It's advanced decline oscillator right now. You can see that's the reading in panel number three or panel number two from the uh, bottom. And you'll see the reading is at minus 151.88. We get down to these, well, now I don't know where we're going to close here or not at day's end. But if we do close that oversold territory, that says you got to expect and anticipate some kind of a uh, bounce. Last time we were down in this area was back here. We closed at the reading uh, back on the trading day of May the 29th. That reading was down at minus 182. And what did we do since then? We most certainly did bounce. Now, you can get down and you get more oversold, by the way, uh, than uh, the minus 150 level. You can get to that extreme area in the minus 250 area. And that takes us back to those April lows that are out there. So I want to watch this come day's end. And certainly you and I will take a look at it come uh, Monday when we are together. The other thing you'll be watching today is going to be that spot volatilitics. Where is that? Here. That's here. So spot volatilitics. It is trading. It's tagged and touched the 50-day exponential moving average at 1345. If we were to close above 1345, and I don't know, I haven't done the calculation to know whether that would be a one-day rate of train change above plus 10%. If it is, when what I'm about to say uh, gets kind of derailed a bit. But if it does close above 1345, the 50-day exponential moving average, it could be signaling to you and I a change in trend inside of the S&P 500. Now, how that's all going to play out with markets being oversold. It sounds to me like it would be pretty rocky out there. Rocky roads, so to speak, out there. Uh, let's move off of these uh, black background charts. Go take a look at what's going on on Stevie's white background charts. We'll start with the daily time frame equity future contracts, each which have held support. 
different, very different areas of support. If we take a look at the ES Mini, its level of support is that oscillator and change line. The number on that as we speak right now is 53.99. The low of the day, 53.97.75. You got to love that. Below that, you'll also see at 53.93, the top of a new profile that is forming. That is a bullish signal. Doesn't mean that price can't get back into it. And if it did get back into it, and if this does take hold, well, then it's got a buy zone. And that buy zone is between 53.17 and 53.48. This profile formed above the prior profile suggests that the trend that has been in place is the same trend to be there. Kind of goes along with the thinking that we could be in an oversold condition inside that New York Stock Exchange advanced client oscillator out there. So that's the ES Mini. The NQ, well, has the NQ tested a level of support? Yeah, I guess Stevie wasn't telling you the truth there. It hasn't. It hasn't even got back to yesterday's low, uh, whereas the ES Mini has, whereas the Dow has, whereas the Russell 2000 has. So the NQ strong like bull. Now, no toppings. Well, there is a wave number seven pattern that is out there. But the better pattern, quite frankly, would be a TD9 count. And uh, today's going to be bar number eight. If price can tick above yesterday's high, yesterday's high is at 19,691. Then what you will get is bar number eight today. You would likely get bar number nine on Monday. All that, that would have to happen on Monday would be a close at the end of the session above 19,242. So that could be a top. You know, a, the ES Mini could also form a TD9 count top. It just has to poke its head above the high from June 12th, and that's at the 54,54,50 mark. With regard to the Dow Equity Future contract, yes, it's trading lower. We know it's oscillator and chain sign is significant resistance. We're also seeing right now how the bottom of its profile is support. And the bottom of that profile is 38.303. We got down to a low this morning of 38.306. So support is held there. In the case of Russell 2000, which has a buy the D point pattern, those were established by those two bullish uh, two bullish hammer candles. Uh, the low one is, I believe, June 10th. That low out there is 2,580. You know, it was this one, 2,560. That's the one from uh, June the 11th. As long as price remains above that level, that level, 2,560, things are okay. So that area of support has been tested. So support has been tested on the Russell 2000 and is held. The same on the Dow Equity Future contract and the same for the ES Mini. Where do we go from here? Well, maybe we should go take a look at what's going on under the covers. So for that, we'll go to some of our intraday charts out here. We take a look at a five-hour chart for the ES Mini. We and I, we just see a consolidation between its profile levels of 54.06 and 54.54. The four-hour the, the four chart has a Rosemont indicator signal, price below profile. It says keep your eyes on the five-hour chart. The two-hour chart, price is trading with inside its profile. I believe this also has a... It has a wave number seven top out there on the two-hour chart. Still, it says keep your eyes on support on that five-hour time frame chart. We had a nice TD9 count bottom in a 30-minute chart. Price remains above profile resistance. It remains above uh, its oscillator and change line. There's no reason for the ES Mini not to continue to rally further. And that's really supported by everything that I see out here inside the uh, 10 and 50-minute charts, although they suggest you do have a battle at 54.26 and a quarter out there. If price can clear that, you're probably headed up towards the 54, uh, 30 33 level out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the S Mini, the equity future contracts. We come back from this break. We have a few questions that are in. I'd love many more. And let's start getting to those. MLM, TMUS, EWQ, EWG, the TLT, and the EWI. We're heading over to Europe to see what's going on over there. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's take a look at Martin Marietta. MLM is the uh, ticker symbolist from uh, Nicholas from yesterday. Let's start with the uh, longer term. Longer term, on a monthly basis, this formed a uh, sell the D point pattern. It did that three months ago, and it created a little dark cloud cover candle. And then last month, uh, in May, it began to form a new profile. Support out here is at 531.96. From a profile standpoint, 626.67 is a resistance level. Uh, we've got that sell the D point top and price so far this month has pulled back and has tested and rejected support, which is that green oscillator and change line at 546.08. That says that the move lower, lower could be done with. If we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart also has a sell the D point pattern. But what it's also formed out here appears to have formed. I can't tell. Let me just take a look on my other system. I just want to see what that um, B to C retracement would be if that is just to see if this has formed or is forming. Oh, come on, don't tell me. Yikes, so mighty. Yeah, sorry about this, folks. Just give me one second here. Um, okay, now it's working. And now it's an 80% retracement. So and there's no A to B equals CD pattern to the downside on uh, the uh, weekly time frame. So at this, so I, I, we do have that sell the D point top. There was a hammer candle at least that formed uh, two, three weeks ago. So at this stage here, um, if price were to close below 544.88 on a weekly basis, well, that would suggest that we want lower price. But I take a look at when I put the monthly together with the daily, knowing that the monthly hit support after forming a top, the daily has formed a TD9 count bottom. So perhaps that was the sideways-ish type move on that monthly chart. Really wasn't too sideways-ish, but was just really a test of support. And perhaps this wants to continue to move higher out there. Well, it's trading above on a daily time frame. It's trading above its oscillator and change line, and it's trading above profile resistance. Closed above it yesterday, trade above it right now. As long as price closed the day above that 560... 
560.40 level. What price should do here, Nicholas, is make its way to 572.43. That's its CD knockout breakdown level. If you can get above that, then you're looking at potential resistance in the 580.34 level, and above that, 592.58. 592.58 is the level that price would need to close above on a weekly basis to suggest that any rally would be something other than a counter trend move. And that's coming from the weekly time frame chart. So, Nicholas, thanks for waiting an extra day on uh, Martin Marietta. Hope that that helps you out. It is wartime. You'd think that this stock is basically uh, trying to form some type of bottom and should continue to move higher. And that's right now what the monthly chart and certainly the daily chart is suggesting to you and I. Let's go over to France out here. This is from GTE. Now, GTE, uh, no, this is from Nicholas. I apologize. Uh, so let's take a look at this first. So TMUS uh, and you're uh, okay. So Nicholas is seeing resistance at 181 for T-Mobile. Nicholas, what I see out here for T-Mobile is I see a daily road momentum indicator top uh, that formed uh, four days ago. So formed where on uh, Tuesday and Monday uh, and uh, and Tuesday. And so it was that bearish engulfing candle. And then on Wednesday, what does price do? Close it below the bottom of that daily profile. What does it do yesterday inside bar and stays below the bottom of that daily profile? So your next resistance level is old support. And that's at the 176.45 level. Slightly above that is its oscillator and change line, currently printed 177.03. So that's what price would have to get to in order for your resistance level of the 181 area to come into play. And even if it gets above 177.04, the daily time frame, Nicholas, has a sell zone. It's a bearish structured daily profile. And that sell zone would be between 179.56 and 181.12. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top this week. It'll complete that pattern next week. Now, price has pulled back and has tested the green oscillator and chain sign, so it has held a level of support. So what Stevie will say is even though we've got a topping pattern that's going to go ahead and confirm today, the signal there on the monthly time frame is neutral. T-Mobile, on a monthly basis, will complete a TD9 count top this month. So all of a sudden, these charts here are suggesting extreme caution out there. At least that's how I read it right now. A topping pattern on the weekly, but we're going to go for a neutral signal since a level, key level of support has been tested and rejected. We don't have that same signal on the monthly time frame. Uh, and the daily time frame has a Rhodes momentum indicator top. So this is suggesting to me, more likely than not, price wants to target one. We'll get to 162.56. Now I'm not saying it's going to get there, but it'll get to 162.56 before it gets to 181. So Nicholas, I hope that helps you out with regard to T-Mobile again. 176.45 is your next upside resistance level, which it should be able to get to. I mean, we are trading above yesterday's high, so that's a little bit of a, a bullish signal. Sounds to me like a bit of a counter trend move to the upside out there. So thanks uh, so much. For for writing in and all your kind messages during the week. And uh, let's go take a look at, uh, now let's move, go move over into Europe. And this is from GTE. And GTE, I want to take a look at France, Germany via ETFs, and Italy out there. And it, this goes really back a little bit to your question yesterday, which is, do you see some kind of major crash? And I don't recall what we were looking at. I think it was the S&P 500. And so now we take a look. And so I'm going to put that conversation together with what we're going to now start seeing in Europe out here. So here's the EUQ. This is for France out there. If we take a look at the top it formed out here for this ETF, it was on May 15th. It was a TD nine count pattern. Now we've got an A to B equal CD pattern, certainly to the downside. Big, huge gaps there on the daily time frame. This is money certainly flowing out of France. And if you take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart on May 24th completed a road momentum indicator top. Now, if price closed below 3801, this tells us about a gigantic change in trend out here. 3801 is its TD nine count breakdown level. And that would suggest that over time, price wants to make a move to 3410. If we take a look at the week, uh, the monthly time frame chart, here's where the real signal will come into play, uh, GTE, and that is that price was above its bearish structured monthly profile for way more than two consecutive months out there. Price is now inside that profile. So the real signal that this is getting ready to get uh, shellacked and move to the downside would be a close below 37.26. So let's not, we're, we're 3801 is in closing below that is not a good thing, but there is additional support at that 37.26 level and a price closes below that, our price targets to the downside, they will become, they'll become 3187 to 3410 out there. <clears throat> 
Money does not like to be in areas where there are boots on the ground in a war for a number of different reasons out there. And certainly, I mean, if you read the headlines today, I mean, we got all world leaders beating their dr Where are the peacemakers, for God's sakes? Literally, these people should spend some time and go hang out in Hiroshima. Yeah, it's come back and it looks great, but go through the museum. Do we really want to put humanity through that again? Well, now let's go take a look what's going on in Germany. Germany, the EWG ETF, what does that do? That forms a TD9 count top. Certainly we're in an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, but this thing is getting crushed as well. Why? Boots on the ground in Europe and things look like and they're preparing for war. Money likes to flee war. That's what we're seeing out here. Where's it going to flee to? Well, there's no boots on the ground, and that's going to be good old U.S. That's why we see the U.S. dollar index higher today and gold moving higher today. We take a look at the weekly time frame. Price right now is trading below its bullish structured profile. So close below 3019 is going to open up the door for a move to 28.72 out there. That's what's going on. We take a look at the EWG. We come back to this break. Let's switch over to the TLT for a moment. Then we'll come back to the EWI. Joe wants to take a look at going long the UNG. So we're going to have to take a look at both the July and August contract. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. You got the uh, Dow down 115, S&P's off 12, and Russell's down 32, NASDAQ is up by 26 points. We're taking a look at the TLT out here. And the TLT is in an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. It's attained the one-to-one -one level, I believe. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll draw in the A to B mark out here. We're just going to move this over to the C point. So, yeah, we're well above the one-to-one -one area. Now, Price should continue to move higher until, in, unless a bearish reversal candle forms. So that's really what you're looking for. If a bearish reversal candle were to form, then you know the routine out there, and that would be you've got to sell the D point pattern with price targeting support. In the case here, the first level of support, G man, would be at 93.43. Excuse me, that's the top of the profile that price closed above yesterday. Its next resistance point out here and we are in bar number f that's number six out there so wave seven top could also form but what price should target next is a cd9 count breakdown level and that's up at the um looks like uh 95 is the uh, number uh, out there so if price can close above that that would be a bullish outcome if we look at the weekly time frame chart price is above profile levels here it closed above its bear structured profile last week it remains above it this week we're trading above yesterday's or last week's high so that is simply an all-out bullish mode now we look at the monthly time frame chart, you can also see profile resistance at 95.65. So we've got our daily TD knockout breakdown area in that same range as the monthly chart, 95.65. If price can overcome that, that would be a positive outcome and suggest you're moving higher. But right now we can see that the TLT is likely headed into a resistance area out there. So gee, man, I hope that that helps you out with regard to the, uh, to the 20 plus year ETF out there. And if not, if you need additional information, just let me know and I'll be happy to get to that. Let's go take a look at um, what's next out here. That would be, let me move this here. Let's go back. Let's take, well, let me see if I have the, I don't think I had the EWI. Darn. I'm just going to have to go in order here. So the next one that we got, oh, it is the EWI. So this is Italy. So let's come back to Italy and see what we have out here. So the EWI GT also formed a TD9 count top. It completed that pattern on May 17th. So we've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. But again, if we look at the weekly time frame chart, you can just see Europe, Italy, Germany, France getting smoked. This week here, you've got price closing below the bottom of its weekly profile, 35.97. That suggests it wants to run all the way down to 32. Now, it won't get to 32.90 until price can close below its monthly oscillator and change line number. And that number right now, so here's where you're going to find some potential support levels on the way down. You'll want to watch these. First, it's going to be at the 35.12 level. Second, it's going to be 34.62. Third, it's going to be 33.65. And if price closes below 33.65, then you should make your way down to the 31.76. You're going to have to take this one step at a time, but we can see what, at least what I see on the screen here. That makes all the sense in the world because things are getting ratcheted up. And when they get ratcheted up, well, that's when money starts to flee. Again, you've got gold up 25 bucks, and you've got the U.S. dollar index up at least uh, 41 ticks out there trading out at 105.60. That is uh, capital saying, I want out, but I also want in. And here is the in. Let's go take a look at our next request, which was from Joe, to take a look at the UNG. Now, if you were to go to the website for the UNG, what you would notice is that uh, price that contained in there, and it's about 50-50 right now. It won't be 50-50 come next week, but right now it's 50-50, and that includes the July contract, which we have up on our screen, and then the August contract. And what we're going to do here, Joe, is we're going to take a look at those first because those are the holdings. That's what contained within inside that, and then we'll go ahead and pull up UNG. Uh, here, if we take, and you're looking for an entry point to buy. So we take a look at the July contract, which has a roads meant indicator top. In this instance here, price is below the uh, uh, center of its bear structured profile, and it's below its green oscillator and change line. This would suggest if July were going to be maintained inside this contract, which it can't, uh, uh, it can for the first couple of days of next week, uh, would get down to the 269 level. So I just simply point that out to you. On the weekly time frame chart, we don't have any kind of a top. We just have resistance that price is traded into 
to in that 316 level. And on the monthly time frame, price is trading right now above, above profile resistance. So that is a bullish signal out there. Now let's go take a look at what's going on in August. And eventually, sometime next week, uh, August will be the entire set of holdings with inside of UNG. Whereas in July, we had a Rhodesman Dominicator top that had formed. We don't have that same pattern inside of the August contract. But what we do have inside the August contract is a TD nine count top that is still in place out there. So you do have a top inside of natural gas for August. Price here is trading with inside a new profile. This new profile formed yesterday, and price is trading below its oscillator and change line. So although we don't have that Rhodes Mintum indicator top, we've got a TD9 count top that was tested and rejected, so it's still in place. We're below the oscillator and change line. If it remains below that level, that level is 301 right now, you should see natural gas for the August contract get back to $2.76. At least that's what it would attempt to do. So what I would say to you, Joe... Uh, is the first place that you would be looking to buy UNG, that's assuming that natural gas doesn't rally or close above that oscillator and change line, would be down at the 276 level. As price gets down there, that's what you would be looking for. On uh, the weekly time frame, much like the, the weekly time frame here does have a sell the D point pattern. Uh, and that was established with that bearish shooting star from last week. So this would just simply suggest over time that price should pull back to test its oscillator and change line. That's a 257. But a 269 is the top of that weekly profile. So that would be the first level of support on that weekly time frame. On a monthly out here, monthly looks very healthy right now because price is trading above the top of its profile. The top of that profile is a 289. But we're too early into the month to know whether or not that's going to hold because the weekly and the daily are suggesting lower price. So that's what I see when we take a look at natural gas. Now let's go ahead and fire up the UNG charts. Let's remember about two seven, the bottom of a profile on the uh, daily time frame is what we're suggesting uh, would be the time to consider taking a long position inside of natural gas. In this case here, the UNG, you know, this is saying that uh, you wouldn't get a uh, uh, that that a move down to 1974 and holding would just be a counter trend move. Uh, but you cannot. Well, you can't do anything you want. But you really shouldn't make your decisions about UNG based upon the UNG chart. It just shouldn't. you got to do it based upon the underlying instrument out there. Uh, UNG doesn't trade for as many hours as the uh, natural gas contract. So you've got, you know, you're, you're, you've got one arm tied behind your back if you're just simply going to trade UNG based upon UNG information. But here, I, what I would say is potentially that price target on the daily time frame contract for uh, August to the downside where there's support, what that would be inside of the UNG uh, uh, ETF would be 1833. So I hope I didn't confuse the holy hell heck out of you. And if I did, my apologies. That wasn't the intent. The intent was actually to clarify things. So uh, best of luck to you there. Uh, I believe that uh, natural gas right now is saying it wants to add lower. And so let's uh, continue watching that. And then please get back to me as you keep an eye on it. But I'll keep an eye on it as well also. So we're about to go to a break here. We come back from this break. We want to take a look at the NVIDIA for Duncan Steve. We're going to take a look at Nike for Dan and Sue in Bethesda, Maryland. We're going to go take a look at Exxon Mobil. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at NVIDIA for um, for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, NVIDIA right now, we can see trade out at 130.49. You're in wave number seven still. That's the only potential topping uh, pattern that I see at the moment. That needs a lower high to confirm that pattern. So the earliest you'd get that would be on Monday. If you did get something like that, price would pull back and test support. That'd be between 123.73 and 125.16. If we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame, we are also in uh, potentially in wave number seven as well. Bar, uh, bar number seven for its TD9 counts. So you could get a top here, theoretically. Um, but that's also going to need a lower high and you won't get that until next Friday, even if you did get it. On a monthly basis, NVIDIA is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. Says you could get a top between next, this month and the next two out there, so pretty wide range. So you got to really be paying attention to what's going on in the weekly and on the uh, daily time frame. But right now, it's uh, gung-ho. It negated its TD9 count top yesterday, um, you know, after basically a four or five day sideways move out there. So it tells us about still strong momentum to the upside. So that's what I see, Duncan, when I take a look at NVIDIA. I hope that gave the information you were looking for. Dan wanted to take a look at Nike out here. NKE is the ticker symbol. And Nike right now is testing support. And support is the bottom of its daily bullish structured profile, Dan. And that's at 93.47. Nike has a buy zone between 93.47 and 94.46 out there. If you did get a close below 9347 then the next area of support on a daily time frame to the downside would be 9196 9196 would be its TD9 count breakout area but right now support has held if you're asking me do I see a daily top out here um, I don't believe so but let me just make sure maybe there was an A to B equal CD pattern uh, let's find out here not the low yeah it's got to be the low Maybe it was the other one. That's okay. We're close enough for, for this work. I'm just going to move this over. Let's take a quick peek. I'm going to try to move it over. Oh my, there we go. Try to move that over right there. And you did it. Yeah, so you do have a confirmed um, weekly, a uh, daily. Roads, I'm sorry. You have a weekly sell the D point pattern that's taken price back to support. And so far, that level is held. Um, let's go see what's going on in the weekly time frame. Weekly time frame on Nike is a consolidation with inside its profile. It's got a buy zone between 90.50 and 92.24, and resistance was 97.44. 
out there, the top of the profile. Monthly, you're trading below profile levels out there. That suggests that price probably wants to move back to its breakout area over time, and that's down at 84.41. But that's not going to happen until we see uh, some other failures inside of Nike on the daily time frame. So, Dan, did that give you the information that you were looking for? Was there something else? But those are levels of support on the daily time frame on a further move lower out there. And, of course, to the upside, you got to clear 97.44. Uh, you, you bet. Uh, let's go take a look at ExxonMobil. This is for Sue and Bethesda. And uh, ExxonMobil right now trading out, oh, trading down at 108.86. So this is in some trouble here when I look at the weekly time frame and that it formed a TD9 count top back on April 12th. And now we have price that is trading below the bottom of its bullish struck, uh, I'm sorry, the bottom of its weekly profile, 109.95, Sue. Now I don't know where it's going to end the day, but if it does end the day below 109.95, it's suggesting to you and I that ExxonMobil may make a run for 100.42. That's on a weekly time frame. On the daily time frame, let's open this chart up, see what we can see out here. We can see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So let's go ahead and put that in. Now, one may have already formed. I don't know. That's a, uh, there's a, I'm just going to move this over to the uh, C point out there, which would be right there. There's your one-to-one -one level. Uh, no, so what you're looking for here now, so there was a couple of hammer candles, and I think that we may have talked about that a few days ago. Uh, but I, I probably was looking at saying, you know, it doesn't look like it's really completed that, um, you know, because it because it just simply hadn't uh, completed that. Now we know for sure that it hadn't completed that because we are trading below that low, trick close below it yesterday. Now, it is trading into a potential level of support of 109.11. What you're looking for here for ExxonMobil to generate a signal that has formed a bottom, Sue, would be some type of bullish reversal candle, a bullish hammer candle, dark cloud cover, a bullish engulfing, a bull sash, something along those lines, a three river morning star. Those would be the candle formations that you would be looking for. That's coming from the daily time frame. Again, the week is suggesting it wants to go target that 100.42 level, but the savior could be uh, the monthly time frame chart. So the real next area for you to watch, because price had closed above the top of its bear structured monthly profile for two consecutive months. And now price is targeting 107.95. So 107.95 is the center of its monthly profile. And if price were to close below that, boy, that would just be confirming a further move lower out there. Of course, my eyes would immediately gravitate to the swing point from January in 2024 out there. Uh, but let's take this one step at a time. So again, the daily needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern and, uh, and until that uh, price may continue to move lower and let's use 107.95 is really the next downside price target for Exxon Mobil. Let's go take a look at even though this wasn't a question uh, it was uh, just some comments inside the Tiger Stand about Domino's Pizza and some AI stuff and uh, of course I'm from Michigan and I even, I even had back in the uh, back in the Late 80s, I even tried buying Domino's Pizza franchise. The only reason I didn't buy it was because the requirement was you had to work, uh, you know, at a franchise location for a year before you would consider being uh, being a franchisee. I, I you know, contacted a number of different people, different contacts, uh, people who knew the uh, owner, and they were willing to do it for six months. But I, there's no way I was going to give up my my day activities and go work at Domino's Pizza. For, anyways, so let's go take a look at Domino's Pizza. What do we see here? We take a look at Domino's Pizza. Well, right now, I just see price uh, trading above profile and below the oscillator and change line. So it's kind of a neutral type signal, but I don't see a top out there. Maybe a double-ish top, so to speak. Same thing on the weekly time frame, but the weekly time frame is bullish and that price is trading above that oscillator and change line. So the swing point that it's dealing with is from May the 3rd. And May the 3rd had 4.9 million shares. This week, we are up into it with really light volume. 1.7 million shares out there. Yes, Ypsilanti, Michigan. If we take a look at the... Uh, and, and, uh, um, and, anyway, and, and Detroit is the home of pizza, believe it or not, right? Because you had, uh, you've got uh, Illich, who he, he, you know, Mr. Illich passed away, but he owns the Red Wings, and uh, I believe um, maybe I don't know if he owns the Tigers or not, but certainly the Red Wings out there, and that is uh, Little Caesars Pizza. So you got Little Caesars up there, you got, um, and you've got uh, uh, Domino's Pizza from Michigan, and that's not even the good pizza. 
those are people that are from Michigan know that you'd go to Buddy's or Shields or something along those lines to get some really good pizza. But how do we get off on this subject? If we take a look at that monthly time frame chart, things are bullish for Domino's Pizza to suggest that it wants to move higher. Let's go take a UEC. That's a real request. That one coming in from uh, Lee. And Lee wants to take, he's looking for a long-term buy. You know, it's possible that you could be there, Lee. If we take a look at this weekly time frame, we'll complete this analysis here. But notice that it's got a weekly A to B equals CD pattern. What you'd really love to see here, because you're looking long-term, you'd love to see some type of bullish reversal candle. The daily's got a TD9 count bottom. And price should rally towards 6.15 to 6.33. If it can close above 6.33, you're on your way to 6.68. The reason why this could be an area for a, a decent bottom is because price is pulled back and is testing the center of that weekly profile, 585. Wait for the weekly chart to give you that bullish reversal candle and then fire away. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get to our next request out here. That's so far the final request. Ticker symbol is OMF. That is one main holding. So when we take a look at this here. Let's open up the uh, let's open up the daily chart. See what we can figure out is going on here. So the daily time frame formed a TD9 count top, formed a TD9 count bottom, negated that pattern, uh, and is trading below its uh, TD9 count breakout level. This is suggesting that maybe there's an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside going on. So for the B point, we would use out here the day of May 29th. 
volume there, 516,000 shares. That was passed four days ago with 853,000. So OMF, not OMG, has got a confirmed daily A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out there. I'll just draw in that A to B line. We'll just simply move this over to the C point, make that a little bit easier for us. And I'm going to give you an approximation. So the initial price target area for OMF on its daily time frame would get you down towards the 43 level. Let's go see what's going on on a weekly. So we've got a confirmed downside move that should take us to 43. Well, before price gets down there, now let's see on the weekly time frame. Do we get a confirmed sell the D point here as well? Probably we did. See a number of different A to B equals CD patterns out here. What's most important here is where is support? And support is going to be at 45.96. So we got 43 as one uh, target level on the daily time frame. And the level of support on a weekly time frame is 45.96. Uh, those will not come to fruition until we see price start trading below its monthly oscillator and change line. And that is currently printed at the 44.88 uh, level. Just give that, you got to give that some pennies or what have you. But certainly uh, 44, uh, 44.86. But. Um, no, actually, we've got everything that's really kind of lining up because, well, I, hold on, hold on. I, I, I must have missed something here. Yeah, so the key area here is going to be 46.93. If price closes below 46.93, 45.96 will be next. If price is below 45.96, we'll get down towards that 43 level. How about that, folks? In one week's time, I've gone from just totally hacking in years, sick as can be, to uh, maybe even getting in a round of golf on Sunday. We'll see. But folks, have a fabulous weekend. And uh, for all you fathers out there, happy Father's Day to you. And I look forward to being back here nice and healthy on Monday. Take care, folks. Be safe.